Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan Jishin Mishan. I'll be presenting on the topic of breath energy and healing in Japanese esoteric Buddhism, particularly through the lens of a tradition called Shingon. So, first, I'll just be doing a brief introduction to Shingon Buddhism, then, talk some about the basic Shingon breathing techniques and meditations at its most fundamental level. Then I'll talk a little about some theory and historical background of Shingon healing before finally getting more deep into some contemporary adaptations and innovations that Shingon priests are doing related to different types of healing. Shingon Buddhism began in Japan about 1200 years ago when a monk named Kukai brought the tradition back with him after studying in China for a while. Some scholars assert that in all of Japanese religious history, Kukai is one of the two most influential figures ever. And it was truly revolutionary for his time the way in which he tried to systematize all Buddhist practice and connect it to theory. Now, Kukai completely revolutionized the Buddhism of his time in Japan. But that wasn't all he was known for. He was a Renaissance man of sorts. He was good at art, poetry. He revolutionized the architecture. He was one of the most famous calligraphers in Japan of that period. Now, the Shingon tradition is a Vajrayana Buddhist tradition. So it originally came from India. These practices and teachings then were carried into China. And finally, again, Kukai brought them into Japan. Uh, Vajrayana Buddhism can involve uh, mandalas, many different mandalas. The Shingon tradition in particular uses two mandalas. Um, so they look like this. The Vajrayana traditions also involve mudras, kind of ritualized hand gestures. Can come like this. And mantras as well. An example of a mantra in the Shingon tradition would be On nabira unken bazarada toban. On nabira unken bazarada toban. When done together, these visualizations in the mind with mandalas, done with the mudras, the hand gestures, and the mantras, all three together represent a purification of body, speech, and mind. I'll introduce here a few types of practice in the Shingon tradition, but know, of course, that these are only brief introductions. Uh, these traditions are all quite complex and have many different variations. One of the basic meditations in Shingon tradition, and one of the first ones that many Shingon priests learn, is called Asokan. This basically means a breath visualization or meditation. So this character, ah, is seen as the source of everything in the entire cosmos. Pictured here in gold is the Sanskrit letter ah, written in Siddham script. Kukai writes in his text, Voice Letter Reality, in Japanese, shoji jisogi, that the gate of the letter A teaches that all things are originally non-arising. All sorts of languages in the threefold world depend on names, and names derive from letters. The letter A, as written in Siddham, is the mother of all letters. Therefore, the truth of the gate of the letter A ah, pervades all things. Elsewhere in the same text he writes, 
No sooner does the inner breath of living beings vibrate the air of the external world than there arises voice. Voice always results from vibration. Voice invariably has as its basis vibration. So many Shingon meditations involve the visualization of such letters inside the body, but then also feeling the vibration of those letters, the sounds of those letters while doing the meditation. We feel that vibration in us throughout the whole body. But don't worry too much about the visualizations for right now, and I'll just show an example of the very basics of Asokan meditation. If you'd like to try Asokan, feel free to follow along. Otherwise, you're welcome to just watch the video and learn about the process. And so for the basics of Asokan meditation, it's very similar to many other basic forms of Buddhist meditation in that you can just begin by counting into a number with the in-breath, then counting out with that number with the out-breath. However, with the out-breath, you make a sound with the syllable ah, that's kind of like this ah. So for example, if we take a seven count, go in, breathing seven, and out, breathing seven. In seven, out seven. Now, the mudra, a basic mudra you can do, the dhyani mudra, many of you have seen, simply setting one hand in the other and touching the thumbs. So, the ah sound in this meditation is the mantra. The hand position is the mudra. And next is a visualization. You don't have to practice this at first, but if you want to try it, then you can add in a visualization of light throughout the body as you're practicing. At first, you might just want to begin with light in a particular area. For example, in the throat, as you're saying the ah sound. But eventually, the goal is to spread it throughout the body. So you have an illuminated body in your mind. And also, as you're making the sound, ah, you visualize the light coming out with the breath into the world. So in many ways, this is like a brief meditation of blessing oneself and the world around you. Another important practice to talk about are the mantras themselves. Now, of course, as I said, the ah syllable is one mantra in itself and the origin or essence of all mantras as seen in the Shingon tradition. But there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of other mantras existing in this tradition. So one of the most important mantras and one of the more famous mantras in the Shingon tradition is the mantra of light. And this is 
particularly relevant for our discussion today because it was used in a lot of traditional healing rituals and services. The characters of the Komyo Shingon, the mantra of light, are seen carved into stone here. This is a stone on Mount Koya in Japan, the home of Shingon Buddhism since Kukai brought it to the country. This stone carving was made several hundred years ago, but still stands at a place where many contemporary Shingon priests go to pray before they are ordained. The Komyo Shingon, the mantra of light, it's not known how common it was chanted in the earliest days of Shingon in Japan, but at least since the 1200s or so, it became one of the most vital mantras within the tradition. It's said that when you recite the mantra egolessly, that it helps the mind clear up and spur on awakening, just as clouds clearing from the sky to reveal the sun. The mantra is usually repeated at least three times. Onnabokya Beiroshano Makaborara Mani Hando Majim Bara Harabari Tayaun Onnabokya Beiroshano Makaborara Mani Hando Majim Bara Harabari Tayaun Onnabokya Beiroshano Makaborara Mani Hando Majim Bara Harabari Tayaun That chant is a Japanese type of pronunciation of Sanskrit, but here is the original Sanskrit words. Back to lecture garb. So when we're talking about Shingon tradition and healing practices, again, we have to go back to Kukai to start because he was so influential on this whole tradition. And Kukai taught that there were three main causes of illness, any type of illness. And so the categories were physical, mental, and spiritual. Now, an illness could have an original physical cause, but then have mental aspects as well. Or it could have an original spiritual cause and then cause physical aspects of the illness as well. Uh, but the purpose of the priest's effort was to find this origin. So go and seek out that origin of the illness to root out the suffering. So if the issue was physical in origin, then you might prescribe a certain type of herb and medicine. If it was mental in origin, then you help the person understand those mental constructs and attitudes and things like that, emotions that might be at the source of the issue. Um, another thing that came into the Shingon tradition, when we talk about spiritual origins, that can even refer to spirits. Um, so there could be exorcisms as well um, in many different types of ways to deal with illness in that sort of way, too. A couple important words when talking about healing and Shingon are kaji and kaji kito. So kaji is a really, really versatile word in Japanese. To understand the word kaji, in the Shingon tradition, it's also really important to understand Dainichi, or Mahavairochana Buddha. So Dainichi, in the Japanese translation, literally means big sun, or big light Buddha. And this Buddha isn't considered a historical Buddha or a real person. It's just personified in imagery, but 
Dainichi Buddha is the purity and light that pervades the entire cosmos. So there's little Dainichi there. And Dainichi is at the center of the main mandalas, but also considered the entirety of the mandalas. So in this one, Dainichi is at the center of each of the nine main sections of this mandala. But again, also considered the entirety of the mandala. So all of the cosmos symbolically is a part of Dainichi. Dainichi is essentially everything. Dainichi is the A ah syllable. Everything comes from Dainichi. Getting back to the word Kaji, it's used as a translation for the Sanskrit Aristana, which refers to empowerment, as in empowerment rituals. But it adds extra meaning with the Chinese and Japanese characters. The Ka, the first character, means to, to add, and the Ji, the second character, means to hold. In Kukai's Hizo Hoyaku, he states that the meaning of empowerment, ka, is the protective, supporting mind of the Buddha. Ji is one's own conduct. He then also states that the sun of Dainichi is reflected in the water of the mind of all beings, and this is called ka. The water of the practitioner's mind experiencing the son of the Buddha is called Ji. If the practitioner meditates concentratedly on the import of this principle through the response of the three secrets, mudra, mantra, and visualization, the inherently existent three bodies immediately manifest enlightenment in this body. And so this gets at the healing principles as well, because the deepest form of healing, of course, is full awakening, becoming a Buddha oneself. This word kaji is fairly versatile, and in some sense it can refer to all of the different practices that occur in the Shingon tradition. But when we add this other word onto it, to could say kaji kito, this kito refers more specifically to the special prayers, ceremonies, and blessings. Um, so kaji kito are these different healing rituals as well. As I mentioned earlier, the mantra of light is used in many Shingon healing practices. And this was really especially popularized by the monk Myoe Koben around the late 1100s, early 1200s. And he especially used it for first blessing sand. And so he would do some somewhat complex rituals and bless sand first and then use that sand in the healing of other individuals. Different mandalas were also displayed depending on the purpose of the ritual. So if the ritual was more for healing of the sick, uh, then with the sand ritual or uh, other types of healing ceremonies, they would display this mandala near the patient. And if the patient happened to be already near death, maybe in their final days or moments, the ceremonies would include this mandala instead next to the patient. And so the healing services could either be for this present body or, in a sense, the spiritual body that would be reincarnated and be in the next life. When Japan began modernizing in the late 1800s, 
modern hospitals and clinics developed, and a lot of the association of medical practices with temples very quickly faded into the background. And for the most part, these associations today have been largely lost. But Qinggong still has this really, really rich tradition of healing ceremonies and meditations and rituals. And so today, and especially this past decade or two, there's been a number of Shingon priests who are really trying to bring back a lot of these older healing traditions and incorporate them in rather creative ways and new ways into modern caregiving practices. I'll just very briefly introduce the variety of activities of six different Shingon priests. Fujihara Jusoku helped establish a Shingon-style deathbed ritual, Ninju Gyogi, as part of hospice care within the Lumbini Group Home, a senior home he was working and living at on the island of Shikoku. It was based on Kakuban's ritual manual, but it was adapted to the modern hospice room and included hospice doctors and nurses. Another Shingon priest, Sato Masanobu, recommends a form of terminal care combining the Kajikito from a ritual text called The Record of Training During Illness with breathing practices like those I mentioned earlier as well as any necessary doctor's aid in medicine, but to do so in a way that releases one from attachments as much as possible and brings ease to the mind before death. Matsumoto Minenori, another priest, helped establish a chaplaincy training program at the Kyoto-based Shingon School, Shuchiin University. It incorporates Shingon teachings into a more standard chaplain training curriculum. The abbess of Ishiyama Dera, Washio Ryuge, helped to run that program at Chuchiyin University after doing her own chaplaincy training in northern Japan. But as an abbess at a large, famous temple, she regularly performs Kajikito ceremonies upon request from temple visitors. And when she has the chance to speak with them, she incorporates the listening skills from her chaplaincy into the service for them. Now, one really influential Shingon figure in modern Japan, especially in terms of spiritual care, is Oshida Dayan. He's the abbot of Senkoji Temple, but also a certified music therapist who has worked two decades in hospitals with terminally ill cancer patients. He developed a system of chanting and meditation in combination with traditional music therapy to treat patients, but has also used the system with disaster survivors for grief care and in other areas. Oshida Dayan directly adapts Kukai's Kaji analogy of the moon's light in water to describe the caregiving relationship. He compares the moon's light reflecting in water to the unity of caregiver and care recipient within the energy of Kaji. By sharing in another's experience of suffering, he says, the equanimity they find in the situation can help both aim toward an awakened state of mind. He calls this the esoteric Buddhist perspective on spiritual care. Between 1994 and 2016, he offered over 25 refreshment seminars for medical workers, incorporating Shingon meditations and teachings into a two-day 16-hour course on self-care and care for others. He helped found a multi-year Traplin training program and a clinical meditation teacher certificate program for medical workers. In it, students progress through four stages of progressively difficult applied meditation practices to use both for themselves and with patients. In 2019, at his temple, 
he established a center to help facilitate all these training activities. One of his students, Takayama Sei-e, is the abbot of Narita-san Shinyoin Temple in Hokkaido. Takayama subsequently founded the Heart Recuperation Center at his temple and now frequently provides spiritual care and counseling in combination with kajikito and breathing meditations, sometimes even incorporating yakubarai in exorcism style kajikito. He says, quote, the power of Mahavairochana Dainichi is flowing through people, flowing through earth. Through meditation during kajikito, you can catch that. This is just a small sample of the type of work being done by contemporary Shingon priests in Japan. But as you can see, there's a wide variety. And it just also helps to show that priests continue to dig back and draw on these centuries of breathwork and healing traditions that developed over time and fit and adapt it to the needs of contemporary people during these times. Thank you for your attention today and all the best wishes.